Happy Friday to you. What's going on? It is so good to see each and every one of you. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today to see something that I have to say. Today I'm talking about how to edit a YouTube video to be relevant in 2017 based on what I've learned. Before I go any further, I wanna assume that you already have a camera, you already have Premiere Pro. Those are the two things I'm gonna make an assumption on. Another thing, what's the most important part of video production in general? Camera? Wrong. It's your content, it's your story, it's what's driving your narrative. What's the second most important part of video production? Your camera? Wrong. It's the audio. If the camera is the horse in the race, audio is the jockey. The horse goes nowhere without it. Okay. That being said, let's move on. 10 steps to edit a good YouTube video in 2017. Step one, import your footage into Premiere and make sure you stay organized in your file structuring after you've copied off the memory cards because Premiere, unlike Final Cut, does not bring the footage in, transcode it, and save new files for you. It uses whatever you tell it to use. So if you move that footage out of its file directories, it's going to be gone and Premiere won't be able to find it. You'll have to relink it. So stay organized in your file systems and file structures outside of Premiere. Step two, create a sequence. Simply grab the footage you want to make a sequence with, drag it to the new item tab right down here, and boom, you have a new sequence created. Now if you look back up in your project panel, you'll see that sequence has been created and it's been named something like the first clip name that was in your sequence of clips. So you can rename it there and move it around in your project to keep it organized that way. Step three, sync your video and audio in your timeline. You want to make sure those are synced and ready to go by hitting the synchronize feature in Premiere Pro. If that doesn't work for whatever reason, they've gotten really good in recent months, but if that doesn't work for whatever reason, you can sync it by eye. You can sync it by eye by looking at the waveforms, finding where they line up, messing with it just enough, tweaking it until it's perfect. Step four, cut out your dead space. This is any space in between your takes, in between your words, in between your breaths. Honestly, I cut out all my breaths. I learned that from the Philip DeFranco show. That is a modern and relevant way to edit. Cut out all the dead space so you're not seeing me sit here, have a thought, and then take a new breath. I know that's a little dramatic, but you get the point. Cut out the dead space and be sure and fade the audio. That's one of the most number one rules. Which leads me to step five, which is fade your audio. I've talked about this multiple times on this channel. This is something that's near and dear to my heart. Anytime you're cutting audio anywhere, whether you're in Final Cut, Premiere, or Windows Movie Maker for crying out loud, fade the audio out at the cut point. This avoids the pop and the click that we get, and it's just far too common. It's a rampant issue. It's systemic audio ignorance, and I'm existing to change that. If you need more information on how to properly fade your audio, go check out this video right here, right now. Step six, synchronize with music or put music onto your project. You may not be cutting to the music or to the beat, but bring the music in, put it in there, find your good relevant music, make sure it's properly licensed or it's royalty free in every single way and allow you to monetize on YouTube. Put the music in, edit to it. Step seven, add some titles, creative titles, something at the beginning or the middle or a title sequence or at the end. Just something to keep the audience engaged. That's what I've learned. I suck at those, but you, you gotta do it. Step eight, Export out a thumbnail JPEG from Premiere using the export frame button on your program monitor. This will take whatever you're seeing in the program monitor and export it as a JPEG, which you can then take into Photoshop or just export it out and upload it as a thumbnail, or you can edit it, do whatever you want to and make it nice and pretty. Thumbnails are critical on YouTube. At least that's what I've learned. Export that before you export the actual project. Step nine, export settings. Hit Command M or go to File, Export, Media to export the timeline or sequence that you have pulled up in fashion that you like. Settings that I would recommend are H.264 for the web use. Go down, make sure that your frame rates match the frame rate of your sequence. Make sure that your resolution matches your sequence. I would export at a variable bit rate, which allows you to go high bit rates for a lot of motion and slow that bit rate down, saving data for not a lot of motion, like a static frame like this, like an interview shot or something like that. Personally, if you want to know some personal details about my life, I try to hit a target bit rate of 16 megabits per second with a maximum of 20. It makes a little beefier of uh, videos, but I've just found that to be the best way of maximizing efficiency while also keeping some quality. YouTube is the second worst video compression for good streaming out there in social media world. Facebook looks horrid. I will never put fa Facebook videos up unless they fix their video compression. Vimeo looks the best in my opinion. YouTube is kind of in the middle there. So you want to set yourself up by already having a really good, nice, well, good looking compressed video at the end with higher bit rates than what might be recommended. Step 10, upload and share. Put it on YouTube. Give it a creative title, something that's interesting, something that's trending, something that makes sense or gives people an idea of what's inside it. Put that same title and some more descriptions about it in the description. Then also tag it with the exact same words that you're using in the title. Give your video the best chance to be viewed on YouTube. And I'm preaching to myself on this because I am brand new to this. My titles have been terrible. I'm learning how to make them more intuitive for the purpose of spreading the audio gospel. Whew. That's it. 
10 steps to edit good YouTube videos in 2017. That's all for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel right here. Let's go towards greatness together, hand in hand, you and me. Also comment, I love interacting with keyboards. I love answering questions or just generally dialoguing about my videos. I also love the critiques. Tell me where I'm lacking. Tell me how to get better. Love all of that stuff. It gives me life. Follow me on Twitter as well so we can keep up over there and I will see you next week.